In surgery, there are several options to do or manage a certain problem. And the more options you have, the better you can custom make the approach to the patient. So it's not like one size fits all. And by customizing your approach, you can serve the patient to the maximum needs and improve the outcomes. And that's what we thrive to serve our patients with at our department. The Center for Advanced Robotics and Image-Guided Surgery started when laparoscopy was introduced and a lot of the big cut procedures turned to become keyhole procedures. And that's where we established the center and we focus on innovations. Innovations in every way, it's not only the technique, it's about all the different stages, starting from the patient presentation, starting from the time they present with the CT scan, how do you analyze it? If you do this surgery A or B, how the outcome would be? And then what are you doing better in the surgery and how are you following these patients? So every single step of the surgical experience. In the United States, it's believed that tens of thousands of patients undergo surgery or treatments for kidney cancer unnecessarily because they're presumed to be kidney cancer. Upon removing the tumor, it's found out that it's a benign tumor that mimics on imaging a malignant tumor. So we're taking the same technology that you may have seen in, in your Google Photos or in your Apple computer where it kind of sorts your photos based on facial recognition software to distinguish and, and learn things that are deeply held within that image that are maybe too complicated for the human eye to capture. And by doing so, we're able to thus far almost approach human level proficiency and expert radiology proficiency in distinguishing between benign and malignant tumors. And we, we hope with further study into this area that we're gonna be able to provide a, an even more personalized approach to kidney cancer care. One of the really big questions in the field is uh, when we see a patient with localized kidney cancer, should they have a partial nephrectomy, which is sort of the general preference, but some of them actually need to be treated more aggressively with a radical nephrectomy. And how do we sort through that and try to make sure that the patients are each being managed uh, individually in an optimal manner? Essentially, just we take the CAT scan and it's a semi-automated software which just looks at the images and automatically measures the parenchymal volume in the contralateral kidney and then the, the volume in the kidney that has the tumor, it automatically measures the total volume of parenchyma plus tumor. And then we, we change the setting slightly and it measures the tumor. And after that, we can subtract out the tumor and determine the amount of parenchyma volume on each side. And it turns out that that differential parenchyma volume provides a split renal function that is as accurate as nuclear renal scan provides, it turns out in our studies, it has proven to be more accurate. Single port robotic surgery is not at all about one cut versus multiple cut. It's about taking advantage of a new generation of robot that have slim, narrow instruments all coming through one cannula. So one cannula, you make one cut, you introduce it in, and from it comes the camera and three other instruments to work. You regionalize the surgery just to where you need to work without going through other areas. I think the way we approach kidney transplantation is a little bit different than most of the centers. We use the most advanced single port robot, which enables us to use one small incision, which is about four to five centimeter in the midline, and through which uh, we do everything. We prepare the bed for the kidney, we put the kidney in, we do the kidney transplantation itself. We are also able to do this procedure uh, extra peritoneally, which mimics the open transplantation and thus also hopefully would reduce the pain and post-operative uh, recovery and makes it minimal to the patients. The single port approach is appealing in PEDS simply because it's a minimal incision site size as well as uh, the approach is such that you're not having to go intraperitoneal and we since we can do this in from a retroperitoneal approach and the challenges that we find for peds is that the the belly is smaller uh, thankfully with the incision site being a little bit lower and the longer instruments that is less of a challenge
the key to see is is you have to see yourself on the patient's shoes, right? And that's our philosophy, right? We want to deliver, yes, world class, but we want to deliver what patients are sick for, right? When you are sick, when you are on the other side of that aisle, what do you want, right? What do you expect? So you want the best, right? Honest, the best outcome in whatever options that we can give to them to, to give them hope, right? To give them to give them but peace. So we continue to strive to do better so that people, our patients can feel at peace that when they are with us, they will always know that they're in good hands. I think we are just at the very beginning of robotics. And uh, what you see today is the tip of the iceberg. And next is gonna be the smart AI application, moving the robot from an extension to my hands and eyes to become a partner in the surgery under the human control. Because no matter how good a robot would be, there is one distinction that can bypass humans and its creativity. So that's why we're very excited about what the future is to bring for us as a Cleveland Clinic. Focusing on innovation will definitely keep moving and evolving patient care into the future.